Tuesday. Good afternoon, South Africa. Lovely to be back on your TV screens. I'm Ponang Mateba. This is Afternoon Express. We are live right now on SABC3. And of course, because it's Tuesday, we're bringing you all of the inspiration we have. And today's topic is something that is incredibly relevant to all of us. Since we are living in an ever-changing South Africa, our first guest is Metro FM DJ and author Rams Mabote. And he's going to be giving us his opinion on how South Africa has grown over the past 20 years. Absolutely. Also in the last we have government relations uh, professional, Darius Yonkar, who has worked on numerous projects all across Africa, talking about the development of Africa. And mm. today, he's going to be discussing the development of South Africa and uh, his perspective and what he thinks we should do. So it's oh, going to be very exciting. Totally. And we have this woman in the loft who is just a woman after my own heart. How yes. incredible is this? At the age of 23, she basically like create, published her first novel no. and, and funded her own woman's magazine there at the age of 23. No How's way. that for inspiration? I feel like I haven't done anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so make sure you don't go anywhere. We've got some really inspiring guests in the loft and we are live. So tweet us, call us, do what you need to do at Afternoon Chat on Twitter. Use our official hashtag Afternoon Express. But it's not just Jay Dizzle and B <laughs> in the loft. Bon Bizzle is in the kitchen. What are we making today, Boo? Good afternoon, South Africa. I'm Bonnie Booley. Welcome to Afternoon Express. So happy to have you in our kitchen. We now know that you absolutely love it when we make desserts. So we're going festive and we're just going sweet throughout the festive we season, right? We are going sweet indeed. We've got the perfect custard. So good tips and tricks on how to make a perfect custard with caramel in it. Yummy. Oh, yummy. And then some yummy Christmas tree treats. Yummy. Yes, I said that. I that was what I'm saying. That I'd never seen before. Julep or something. Julep. Julep. Oh, what's the type? It's the name of the drink. So then also a yummy, a yummy drink for the holidays. Awesome. A mint julep. Awesome. Can't wait to get started. You look absolutely amazing as oh, usual. Nice. And of course, if you want to follow along at home, go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and shopping list. For now, though, let's head back to the couch. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Looks absolutely delicious. Now we're ready in the car on the couch and in the loft today. And our conversation really revolves around living in an ever-changing South Africa. And our first guest is no stranger to this topic. From being born and raised in Soweto over the course of his life, he has built an incredibly successful career as a radio and TV presenter, an author, and a reputation manager. Joining us on the couch is veteran Metro FM presenter Rams Mabote. Good afternoon. Good Good afternoon, my friend. Lovely to see you. Good to see you. Good <laughs> Lovely to see you. To see I'm, you I'm, too. I'm glad that you didn't say DJ. I know, I but Jeannie did, and you said it's the first time somebody calls me a DJ. Really? <laughs> I can't spin a dick to save my ah, life. Ah, you're a presenter. Now, Mr. Mabode, lovely to have you. What an incredible... You are definitely the perfect person, you know, to chat to us about this particular topic. But let's start with your book, Crisis, What Crisis? Do you think it's still relevant in terms of today's political climate? Well, in the last five days, I could have written a sequel to that oh, book. Oh, eh? really. an hour, so like it, four hours it ago. It is so relevant, Absolutely. it's not funny. Absolutely. We, we actually do very well in creating crisis in this country, so I probably will have enough subjects for more books going forward. Mm. I'm happy. I yeah. love my country. Yeah. Now, now let's take it back to the term born free. We, it's a term we hear every day, every single day. Some of us know what it means. Some of us don't know what it means. Is it still relevant, you know, today? And how do you, you know, see born frees living? Are they living the way, the way they're supposed to be living like? Well, I don't, I've never thought it was relevant in the very first place. Wow. It's not a physical thing. It's not mm. the fact that you were born in Johannesburg or you were born in Cape Town that one can call you born free. Your, your birth is dictated to by so many other things or your life is dictated to by so many other things. A child born in 1998 may have been born after 1994 when we all voted. But if they're born to a woman, a single mother who lives in a squatter camp somewhere in Cape Town, uh, who lives at 4 a.m. to go and eke out a living, uh, comes back at 8 p.m., can't do homework with this child. Mm. Uh, this child has to survive on their own and, and, and make life happen. Yeah. Uh, is this child really free? Yes. Is this woman really free if she still gets paid 1,100 rand a month and all that 75% of it goes to transport, not even sure. food? So wh what is this born free really about? I'm not too sure, and I had a conversation with somebody who twisted my mind a bit. I always thought it was a commercial thing. But she actually argues it's both commercial and political. It, it, it is a decoy. It is sending us the wrong way. It is wow. not the reality. The reality is that freedom is not, is not the time you're born in. Freedom is the conditions you're born into. So would you say then they are actually born free or they're born into the shackles of the past? Well, they're born in South Africa, but they're different. 
they different depending on their circumstances. I don't think bone frees are black or white. Uh, and I, here I am using bone free, mm. but I'm saying that including a child born to a wealthy family who went to a private school. Let me give you an example. Yes. This week I went to my son's school and it was the graduation thing. Uh, he's 13 in grade seven. The school started there seven years ago. It was at the time 70% white, 30% black. At the time of his graduation of grade seven, it's 70% black, 30% white. But 99.2% of the teachers are white. The prefects are 99% white. So what image does he see of the country that he lives in? That is, is my son, who comes from a father who's fairly OK. Yes. You know, I drive a Polo, so I'm, okay, mm. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, it can't be only about me and the fact that we live in some suburb. Okay. His reality at school is that white is still might. So, mm -hmm. so it, just because he's 13, it's not necessarily free from what we live in, the reality that we live in in this country. So then what would you say is your interpretation of the rainbow nation? And are we actually living according to the term? Well, we are a rainbow nation. And you know, if you look up the rainbow, those colors are living separately. They're, wow. they're not intertwined, are they? So, and I don't, I don't want to be a pessimist. I think that this country is going to get somewhere at some point. It's only 21 years. It's a process that we need to take. But that process demands of us to not be denialist. It demands of us not to be, to be the, the word I like, maybe, maybe too complacent and think, ah, oh, Mandela came in and we voted and we danced, everything is okay. Everything yes. is not okay. It's work that has to be done by everybody to make sure that hopefully one day we will become in a fully united nation. It will take the politicians to do the right things and they hardly ever do. It will take business to do the right thing. It will take everybody else. But mm. I don't want to pretend but just because we had 1994, everything is, is forgotten. Before 1994, there was 358 years of serious division. So 21 years, still early. So how long do you think then we need? Whoa. How many years do you think then we how need long is a piece of to heal? I don't know. Gee, I don't know. I hope it takes less than another 21 years. We need two generations. They've always argued that two generations will be the greatest measure of seeing whether there's a, great, there's a, there's a change happening in any country. Mm. This is generation one. So another 21 years, we should see some change. Hopefully, that change is not a revolution. If it is, I hope it's a silent revolution, not, not a violent revolution. Got you. Yeah. And earlier on, uh, Rams, you mentioned transport. And uh, earlier on, I mean, you, you wrote a very lighthearted, but it hit the nail on the head, an article called Mayor Park Stau will let my people <laughs> drive. And it was called <laughs> about the eco-mobility festival yeah. that was in Santon. And you mentioned how, you know, it's, it's so interesting that we want to do something good for the nation. But theoretically speaking, it is so expensive for people who have been using public transport all their life. So how do we do it? Expense versus doing something good for the environment? How do we close then and bridge that gap? Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, one of the reasons I do what I do is because I don't have answers for those things. So I can sit on the other side and be a critic. Okay. Okay. But I think that sometimes we, we focus too much on what I call middle class luxuries and we call them problems. There are bigger problems for other people out there. Mm. There are people out there who actually still do not even understand how the, to take a bus to the next place. And if you're going to ask me whether I should worry about eco-mobility, I really want to argue about why we have e-tolls. Because those e-tolls impact more the poor than they impact me. I will afford the e-tolls. If I take a position not to pay them, it's because it's a political stance. Yes, absolutely. So I think that we should spend more time trying to uplift the poor. OK. And that's, that's where we should be going. So How we do it? Mm, it's a different I, when story. When I get into politics, then we need a completely years. different yeah. you know, show for that. But with that said, would you say then the Eco Mobility Festival was uh, successful? Yes or no? The picture said so. The press releases said so. I don't know. I still drove throughout that time. I did too. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> All right, Mr. Ramsoboti is still in the loft. I'm going to tackle him for the next couple of minutes. Thank you very much for joining us in the loft. But today much. we are giving away two copies of Ram's book, Crisis. What crisis? All you need to do is SMS the keyword express and your name and city to 33728. SMSs will cost you one round 50. T's and C's apply. And of course, all of that is available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. After the break, we do continue the conversation around South Africa and how far we've come with futurist Darius Yonker and in the kitchen Bonnie is making us a refreshing mint and cappuccino ice julep so make sure you don't mm. move more after the break give kids the gift of hearing this Christmas 
are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, he's an international government relations professional and qualified futurist. As a diplomat in the Southern African Foreign Service, he served in numerous capacities over nine years, including the South African Embassy in Washington, D.C. He has been involved in a number of international initiatives focused on African development and priorities, leadership development and international engagement. Joining us on the couch is Darius Yonker. Welcome. Hi, Jenny. Firstly, I'm quite fascinated. What exactly is a futurist and what does that take? It's not somebody who predicts the future. It's somebody who yeah. plans for the future. So it's a methodology you can apply to any problem you face in your life and we unpack it and we look at how it could lead to different options. Are we all going to be okay? Probably. <laughs> okay, good. Now, how has South Africa's political climate changed from 2004 to present date? Well, obviously, um, prior to democracy, it's incomparable. But since 94, um, we've really matured politically. Politics isn't pretty. It's not clean. It's not kind. So sometimes people focus on the ugliness of it, on the messiness of it. But that's part and parcel of it. Wherever you go in the world, that's what politics will look like. If you look at how we've handled the major crises we've encountered over the last 21 years, we've done very well. Um, if you look <clears throat> at the change from President Mbeki to President Motlante, that went very well. It could have gone much worse. If you look at the recent um, cabinet reshuffle and everything that happened thereafter, it's also something we handled very well. And it's a testament to our democracy that we are maturing. We're getting there, bit by bit. It will probably take two generations, like Ram said, but we're doing well. So, working in Washington for as long as you did in the, dip in the diplomatic field, how would you say is the international opinion, I suppose, on South Africa and how we've handled things from, you know, our rainbow nation and transition from 94 to present date? Well, the world was watching our transition very closely and President mm. Mandela was lauded on international stages and really became an icon of social justice and the positive change people saw in South Africa. Thereafter, South Africa has very much found its role as a medium power, a medium income country. Um, in some places, we're too boring even to be discussed that often, yeah. which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at the moment, there are interesting times, uh, which does bring the world's attention back to us. But if you look at our basic indicators in terms of how our economy is doing, we're stable, we're going to continue being stable. If you look at our social development indicators, there's a lot that can still be done politically and economically, mm, and that's true. what transformation's about. And we'll exactly. talk about transformation today and where transformation needs to lead our country. Exactly. Uh, you know, as Rams was saying, if you have a look at 1994, we danced, we celebrated, we rejoiced, but have we lived up to our, 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 our constitution within, and, our, and our democratic transformational goals within this time? It's important to keep in mind that our constitution was a compromise. It was the best that could be achieved under those circumstances. It's time now to revisit the Constitution, not to redraft it, not necessarily to make changes to it, but to think about what it means for today's generation and what it means going forward. Um, the Constitution's Bill of Rights is a widely acknowledged testament to what a country really can be when it's at its best, and also how the attainment of so many social rights are seen as being there to be progressively attained. Okay. And the question being asked now is at what pace must that progress take place? Exactly. Well, look, when, when all the transformations happened, I think, and, and sometimes speaking about politics, it's an elephant in the room, but white people had to handle BEE and all of that. How, where are white people today? What challenges are they facing? I think white people are doing very well. Um, if you look at the statistics from our last census, you'll see that white people are enjoying the highest income levels, the highest education levels, the lowest relative poverty levels, um, access to the best services often privatized. So I don't think materially white people have anything to complain about. Yeah. Um, in terms of more controversial policies like uh, affirmative action, employment equity, black economic empowerment, um, that's part of the transformation process. Some will argue that it's been going too slow. It should have gone faster. Mm. So um, 
white people need to figure out where their role is in that process, how they see it. I personally think a comprehensive understanding of how the world works, acknowledging that we live in a racist and a sexist world mm. where the most privileged people tend to be white men and the least privileged people tend to be women of color. That's the situation around the world. Mm. How did that structure come about? Uh, what role do we as individuals play in perpetuating that structure? And how can we change it through individual decisions and individual action? Mm. Let's have a look at our young white born frees. Are they quite like our black counter counterparts, not necessarily born free? Well, once again, look at the statistics. That's the closest to fact that we have. Um, white youth are doing very well. And um, if you look at the opportunity they have just by being born white, it's immense. It, it's incomparable to the disadvantage that so many people who are born into poverty have. And most of those people are black. And um, taking it forward, it's really just about how the youth for themselves come to understand the position they find themselves in, acknowledging how they've benefited, and themselves realizing how they can carry it forward. How are they going to be part of the change that the sure. country needs? Now, a, a white privilege and all of this inequality still seems to be slowing down transition. How can this be better managed? Well, my personal view is that it comes down to individual efforts and um, communities, families, more on the local level, need to acquaint themselves as best they can with their understanding of why our country is the way it is. Mm. I think there's often um, a lack of understanding for everything that's preceded us and, and why we are in the position we are. And that'll empower people, even those who are very privileged themselves do have insecurities mm. and, and, and self-esteem issues Absolutely. about the role they need to play. And thus empower themselves to be the agents of change they need to be. All right. Thank you so much for chatting to us, Doris. Now, we're going to take a little bit of a break from this because it is getting quite heated right now, though. We've got Bonnie in the kitchen. <laughs> With Nescafe's Dolce Gusto machines, you get to feel like you have your very own barrister right there in the comfort of your own kitchen. With 16 different flavors, it doesn't get more delicious than this. Today, we're having some fun as we make the perfect chilled drink for the hot December days. And we do this by using the beautiful... Dolce Gusto machine. Oh, I see you wow. like it a lot. I like you? it a lot. <laughs> it looks so chic. It does, doesn't it? So techno there's, chic. There's something quite stylish and sophisticated about yes. a well-made yes. cocktail, especially in the holidays. Yes. So with this fabulous machine, it's going to make both of us look like queens <laughs> at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to take this out. And first part, we're going to start with a grey. With the pod. With the pod. That goes in there. Okay. And then just pop that down and push that. That goes in. Can we do the hard work of watching? We do the waiting. hard work of watching. Okay. How does it look? Does it look delicious? Does it, it looks look amazing. Young? It looks like it's working. <laughs> <laughs> does it smell it yummy? It smells incredible. Does it smell it yummy? It smells like iced coffee. And then once that's finished, we just lift it up. Let's let it finish. Okay. Ta-da. Lift that up. Pop this out. Ta-da. Actually, I think I should have put, put the white one in first. And this is like a... a this is the first part of a two-part recipe, right? Yes, okay. exactly. So then that's going to sort of finish up there. So mm -hmm. let's, let us let that do that. And mm -hmm. we can move over to here. So this is our delicious cappuccino ice that we're using here. That's okay. the flavor that we're the using. The ice part of our recipe. And then with that cappuccino ice, we're going to pair it with beautiful mint and all sorts of yumminess. So let's take this over here. So it's an iced... Coffee, mint, julep, what, what, something. Julep. So it's a, yeah. it's a mint and cappuccino julep. ice, which is our beautiful <laughs> flavor from okay. Nescafe. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to add into our cocktail. So first awesome. things first, let's add that, our flavors in there. Okay. Pour that into there. And then that we're going to add to, so you, can, you can make an alcoholic version or non-alcoholic version. Okay. We're going to add okay. some amarula into here. Right. And then but some, it's December, so we're making an alcoholic version. Then a little bit of <laughs> vodka, just to make it delicious and okay, tasty. Cool. Then some ice, because of course you want it nice and cold for the summer months. Let's yeah. pop that in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's just get a few of those. And then we're just going to... Let's just pop that in there. And we're just going to get our lid going on here. And then do you want to give the this little gadget this a... This little gadget a run for its money. Okay, cool. Let's um, just pop that on. And then just push down. Is that enough? Dance while you're or more? It. No, go for a little more. We just want to ice it nice and crushed and delicious. Yummy. Yeah, Sounds yeah, good. It's 
working, it's working, done. You can actually hear when we the like ice it is lot. finished. It kind of yeah. stops that really loud and jarring banging yeah, into it this beautiful smoother. clitter and clatter. Okay, then turn clitter it on. Clitter and clatter, nice. Oh, nice. No, I, I like that. that. I, I don't like think that. makes any sense, but I everyone what understands, you I think. <laughs> okay, cool. So then you're just going to pour that into our glass over here. Let's just give this cocktail its own stage. How are you doing there? Oh, wow. What's going on? How can I shoot? <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah. Okay. Let's just... Oh, it down. Turn and turn and turn. Oh, okay, we're not getting this thing out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in a perfect world, what would we do next? What would we do? So we're gonna pour that in here with some ice okay. cream and some mint, and then we're gonna top that off. Not sure what's happened here. There we go. Yeah. I think you just created a little bit of a seal, that's all. Sure. Pour that in here, and look how beautiful, velvety, and creamy and delicious. That cappuccino ice is just flavor fantastic. Awesome. A little bit of ice awesome. cream just to complement our any flavor ice cream of your any liking, flavor. right? Okay. All the way to the top, and it's just gonna sink in there. Some chocolate shavings just to finish that off. Let's just and some mint. help them out there. Yeah, do you wanna pop some mint on? Yes, of course. Okay. Get some good leaves. So, I mean, typically a mint julep is a cocktail that you would have with bourbon so and- proud of myself. This is just <laughs> spectacular. It looks absolutely amazing. Can't wait to taste that. If you want the recipe, go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for the full shopping list. Thank you so much, Claire. Pleasure. <laughs> After the break, I chat to one of my favorite authors. Don't go away. Five Roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest Ceylon teas because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. Welcome back. We're live on SABC3. This is Afternoon Express. As you know, we're counting down to Christmas. And of course, one of the very important, important, Important parts of Christmas is dessert and you cannot have dessert without custard. So today we're making some caramel custard with Claire. Caramel custards with Claire, darling. That's got a bit of a ring to English it, teacher. It? What are we what are we doing? What do we need? Let's get it. I'm so glad going. you feel the same way about me and custard and Christmas. I think yes. it's just you just gotta. It's like it's the trifle or it's the jelly or it's the custard. You need you need custard. Or and I it's think, not Christmas. I think everyone's a bit scared of making custard. Yeah. And yes, the storeboard stuff is delicious. Walls yeah. has amazing, amazing storeboard custard. That is it's kind of nice to make your own, especially if you're going to buy a dessert, why not make your custard? Got you. I think it's a great way to kind of offset, you know, homemade versus mm -hmm. store-bought. All right, so three eggs. We're going to do four, four eggs. eggs. All right. In here, and if you want to help me, you can just whisk up the sugar into that. Clear. So, uh, you know what you're doing. Come on. <laughs> okay, what am I doing, actually? Just so we're just going to sprinkle that in there. You mm -hmm. don't want to tip. You don't want to add your sugar to your eggs too soon. Yeah. Because the sugar ah. actually cooks the eggs slightly, well, the yolk slightly. Really? So do it at the last minute, which is pretty much now. And you're just going to whisk that up. You're not really looking for anything special there besides combining it. So just combine okay, so it's the combined. two. Combi you've combined um, um, that. That's, I'm aching. So that's just, just yes. mixed up nicely together okay. like that. Uh -huh. And you can see there's nothing special about it. The, the air bubbles, you're not looking to aerate it. You're not looking to get any sort of volume in it. You just want to mix it up nicely. Okay. So we've got our cream and milk in here, heating nicely. That's going to take but just a little while. You know, Claire, I have to ask you, because I've got a lactose intolerant baby brother. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he loves custard, we love custard. So is there an alternative in terms of not using full cream milk so and I'm cream? So I'm going to admit that I've never made a lactose free version of it, okay. but always does have a lactose-free milk. Yes, they do. So you can I use that. think you could use that. Okay, perfect. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm actually going to try it. I'm, you I'm try interested. It. I'd I'm love interested. to see, actually, because I'm going to try I mean, it. there are lots of maybe lactose intolerant viewers who want to know an alternative because they exactly. don't want to miss out on custard. Custard is a big yeah. deal. All right, so. Custard is amazing. So once mm -hmm. this is heated up just a little bit more, we're not going to wait for it to get there. You want to temp your eggs. That's another important thing when it comes to making your custard. Temp your eggs. Temper. Temper. So you don't eggs. just pour all your eggs into uh -huh. your hot milk. You take a little bit of your hot milk and you're gonna do a bit of whisking again for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. So then slowly, slowly pour some of your hot milk over that. So what it's doing, it's slowly bringing the eggs up to the temperature of your milk and cream. But so how, just add how that. do you not then end up with like well, that's exactly it. Slowly, Scrambled eggs. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Got you. That's what you're doing. You just slowly bring those eggs, eggs up to the right temperature and not over the point and turning them into scrambled eggs. That is actually tricky to make. No, just no. Follow, the, follow the steps. I think okay. follow the steps 
perfectly and you're good to go. So okay. I think the thing with most desserts and recipes is my my ultimate tip is always follow the recipe. And then you take put it back in the pot. Back into the pot, back into the heat. And another important tip is temperature here. So you don't want it to be too high and you don't want it to be too low. Too Got high, you. you're going to scramble your eggs. Too low, you're actually just not even going to cook your custard. It's not going to thicken. So what you're going to do is slowly Slow. look at it. Yep. I like to change over from a whisk to either a wooden spoon mm -hmm. or a spatula where you can actually scrape the bottom because it does tend to stick at the bottom. Uh -huh. So you're scraping, getting all Clever. the way around the pot and really getting into all those areas. Keep an eye on it, keep stirring it, and then it's going to slowly start to thicken. A good tip, if you've got a wooden spoon, is to test the back of the spoon. It's not ready now, but what it would do is make a nice clear line yes. in the back and your okay, custard's ready stunning. to go. So keep an eye on it. And then once that's ready, we're going to strain it out just to get rid of any sort of any egg bits that haven't really cooked up or there vanilla whatnot. Pod in there? And then we've got vanilla pod that we've uh -huh, added into that. I see. And then the best part is just some caramel. I mean, we're you just know what? gonna scoop that in there and if uh -huh. you want to just give that a mix you can either marble it in or you can actually just mix I mean, it all Claire, the way in. i am going to just finish this entire bowl give it a good mix and then you just serve it over pour it over some maybe christmas pudding or a little mince mince tart or something okay, like have that have you made a trifle pie. girl like like you like we do in the hood. Uh, what is trifle in the hood <laughs> it's got some like biscuits and then it's got custard and then it's got jelly and then it's got strawberries and then cream. It's the whole shebang. We need to make it. You are going. I'll make okay. it. I'll help you. I'll okay, teach I'll you. I'll make the lactose free custard. You make the trifle. Deal. Because there is no Christmas without trifle. This looks so delish. All right. So I'm going to take just a little bit of that mm -hmm. and we just pour that over there. And that is <gasps> magnificent. And then if you want to, you can just like use the spoon and go right in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's what you, her and I are going to do. But you, you know, obviously, the recipe is on our website, afternoonexpress.ca.za. This looks incredible. Claire and I are going to dig in. In the meantime, uh, Bonnie is standing by with our next guest on the couch. Now, she was born in Zimbabwe and raised in South Africa. And at the age of 24, she has already founded her own magazine called Vanguard Magazine and recently published her first novel called Sweet Medicine. She has a passion for addressing the social issues specific to young black women in South Africa. And she's a member of the World Economic Forum's Global Shapers Community. Joining us on the couch is Panache Chigumanzi. Welcome. Hi, Bonnie. This is so funny to, to be with you because people always say we look alike. People yeah, say, <laughs> we do. We do look alike. <laughs> Like, don't yeah, you? Yeah, 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 we look alike. So this is really funny to almost see my twin yeah, on, on the couch. So yeah. hi. So lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me. So mm -hmm. I'm um, savoring your book mm -hmm. so much so that I only read like two pages a day yeah. because I don't want it to end. <laughs> well, it's a really short book. It's not. It's not. It's yeah, not that long. So. Yeah. Congratulations Thank on it, you. though. It's Thank absolutely you. superb. Yeah. yeah. Well, coming from you as a, as an author yourself, yeah. so I mean that's that's always exciting to have another author reading your work. Thank you so much. What is the main narrative of the book? I think very briefly, it's about a young woman um, who's seeking economic and romantic security um, at the height of Zimbabwe's economic woes in 2008 um, through what we might call otherworldly means. And for me, otherworldly means is, you know, Christian beliefs and traditional belief systems. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really just sort of the kind of compromises that someone makes as someone who was brought up in a very traditional um, household where you have your, you know, traditional uh, uh, Christian beliefs um, and you have the ideas many Zimbabwean people have about, you know, how it works, if you do this, if you go to school, you know, this is the kind of life that you'll have um, but then the economy sort of you know turns around and yeah. the life that she expected for herself isn't what she's going to get so she wow. has to make some decisions and compromise about you know who she thought she was and what she will is and is willing to do yeah you launched to a full house in Cape Town mm -hmm. and one that I was really honored to attend yeah and mm -hmm. something very poignant happened that I can't get out of my mind mm -hmm. um, when you opened the floor to the audience to ask questions it was a, a guy who mm -hmm. stood up stood up to want to ask a question yeah. and then you said politely please can it be a woman who asks the question first yeah i was just so taken aback by your very robust affirmation of your beliefs around women around patriarchy around feminism please take me through that well i mean i very much believe in you know being a womanist which is really about you know black feminism a feminism that speaks to the various you know sort of social identities that we have i mean even looking at the book it's published by a black woman your publisher yes, I yes. So much she's um, amazing we she's love amazing her. i mean the woman who's on the cover is a young black woman who's mm -hmm. in cape town she's an amazing uh, designer the graphic designer was a black woman all of that is very important for me because it's not you know it's not good enough to simply say we've got someone who made it through the door but we aren't sort of bringing people 
along with us. And yeah. I think that's really important. And you start realizing that if I'm not free or if Bonnie's not free, um, you know, for example, or domestic worker is not free, then I'm not free even as a middle class um, black woman. Or for yeah. example, queer black woman is not free even as a heterosexual black woman. Right. I'm not free. It's to right. understand that the oppressions yeah. are, are interlinked. So it's important. It's very hard. Um, particularly in a, in a, for example, in a publishing world that's, you know, very white dominated, as much as South Africa is, mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. important to sort of try and live your politics. And, and I think as many of us who are black feminists know, it's very difficult and the costs that come yes, with it. Yes, yeah. yes. And you, mm -hmm. you are so open about your pro-black womanness and you do it in, in a way that is so, it's so simple and because many people don't speak out anymore because they're so afraid to be labeled as angry. Well, you I get that all the time. <laughs> you get that all the time? I get angry You don't look all the like time. you never get angry. Uh, I'm you look always, like I'm called always... angry. I'm called all kinds of names that I've been called all How the time. How do you move past that and still focus on your goal? I mean, you're a person at the end of the day. So, you know, there are times when you sort of, you sort of take a step back and you, you might get upset. But I think, again, it's recognizing that sometimes for me, when someone's upset, then I know I'm doing the right thing because it means I'm really speaking to the issues of power. Because if everyone liked it, then yeah. I, there's no change that's really happening. Yeah, it so would be popular it's politics, just recognizing yeah. that it's, it comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. I definitely, you do get those names and there's nothing you can do you about can it. Do. I mean, look at, for example, Serena Williams, who just got the Sports Person of the Year by Sports Illustrated. And what does a, a newspaper do? They compare her to a horse. To a horse. This is yes. what happens to yes. you as a black woman um, athlete who's doing so well. It simply wow. comes with the territory wow. just for existing. So yeah. with or without me saying anything, I'm going to have <laughs> the labels put on me. So yeah. it, it really just comes with the territory. What inspired you to start Vanguard magazine? It inspired, well, what I had worked in media for quite a while, and I started to sort of understand that it's not good enough to simply to have black people employed. You know, you, uh, very often you find in a lot of companies, very junior levels, but in terms of management, who owns the platform, it tends to be white male dominated. Um, and when I looked at magazine racks, you know, if you go there and I thought it looks like this might as well be a rack in Europe. Um, wow. It doesn't look like people like me, it doesn't speak to my experiences. So I want to be able to read myself in that. And that really is my philosophy around media. Toni Morrison says, um, if there's a book that you um, haven't read and you want to read, you should be the one to write it. And that's pretty much sort of been the way in which I've gone about it. Um, it's not to say that they aren't black women writers. They're many. I'm yes, saying in front of one. Yes. But I mean, the first time I ever re read a um, black author at school was a matric. Wow. Um, and that's you know, almost too late. That's too late. And I'm a born free, right? So right. it speaks to yeah. it speaks to these issues. Yeah. You know, so it's it's it, you know I have to then you know to, without being try to to be the change that I want to see. I have to be the one because I'm going to be begging and begging, yes. but you know no one's going to do yes. it for me. What prompted your 2013 TEDx talk, A New mm -hmm. Identity for Africans? Well, funny enough, it was actually called Deprogramming yeah. um, the Colonized Mind for Africans. But okay. it was changed, so okay. we'll, we'll talk about that another time. Okay, because um, it's lighter, it's, it's safer, It's lighter, right? it's safer, exactly. Yeah, it um, so these are the ways feathers. in which... <laughs> so, it, I mean, really that was just about how I felt that the media images that we see around us don't really reinforce... Uh, a positive image of black people. Um, and that's where a lot of the ways in which we learn racism from as well. So what do I see on TV every single day? It's, you know, who's the criminal, um, you know, on the TV show, who's poor, who's rich, and all of those kind of things um, really don't you know, reinforce a positive image of black people and self-esteem and, you know, going to, to a, a black consciousness. And at the time, I argued that we don't need another I write what I like. We need better um, programming. I wouldn't really say that anymore, but right, you know, the, the right. idea is that we need to have in the everyday program, not everyone is going to pick up an academic text, um, you know, read Long Walk to Freedom, you know, but every day I'm watching TV and that's where I'm going to see the positive images around right, myself. Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay, we're going to chat mm -hmm. a little bit later. We yeah. have to take a break now. But you are such a force, a beautiful one at that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're giving away two copies of this amazing book, recently published, Sweet Medicine. All you have to do is SMS the keyword, books, your name and city to 33728. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50. T's and C's apply and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Stay where you, right where you are because after the break, we chat more to Panache, specifically about provocatively titled lecture of coconuts consciousness and cecil john rhodes don't go away you don't want to miss this give kids the gift of hearing this christmas are you with us
Welcome back. We're live on SABC3. This is Afternoon Express. Now, as far as our country has come over the years, there is still a massive inequality in South Africa. How do we bridge the gap so that all South Africans can enjoy a prosperous, comfortable life and be afforded equal opportunities? Well, we're back on the couch with our guests, Rams, Panash, and of course, Darius. Now, Panash, lovely, first of all, to meet you. What an nice honor. Nice to meet you. It's no. my girl. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh my I had to do that. I had to do that. <laughs> And the, the one thing I remember yeah. wanting to ask you was, of course, your, yeah. you know, your Ruth First lectures. And yeah. your, the title was of Coconuts, Consciousness, and Cecil John Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Coconuts. That. Yes. Why that term? I, I, to be fair, I was being provocative, but I think I was speaking to, I think, the idea that there's some of us who've gone to the schools, who've, you know, given the access um, that most people haven't had as, you know, particularly young black people. And the idea almost, I think, with our generation mm. was that if you put them all in one school, the old racists will die and, you know, these guys don't see race, they don't see color and things will be okay. Yeah. Um, but it's not the case. And I think it's interesting that, you know, this year, fees must fall, I mean, rather, roads must fall started at UCT, yeah. yes. one of the most privileged, in fact, the most privileged um, campus um, in South Africa and that's where you're finding the people who shouldn't be complaining because I think nobody um, is surprised when an unemployed youth um, does not like the status quo but someone is surprised when someone who went to St. Thibians or you know the very elite sort of private school I went to a private school I shouldn't be complaining you know I wear, you know I had all of uh, all of these things yeah. um, but then it's then speaking to what are the, the cracks in this model that we've had sure. in particular I think for me I would critique sort of the the model of access if we simply allow people People in that's not good enough you have to fundamentally change for example you're speaking about your son what are the school songs they sing mm -hmm. um, what mm -hmm. languages we were told we're not allowed to speak in our, uh, in our, our languages, languages yeah. at, at school we're told English. only you're allowed to speak Afrikaans but yeah. I'm not allowed to speak my language and it's those ways in which we're realizing that it's not good enough to simply say okay you can now come to the same school or not you true. can now into the same public spaces you have to fundamentally change and restructure the way in which South Africa works. Mm. Yeah. So you can be born free as long as you kind of take As long as you what assimilate you know. and you do the right things and that sort but of thing. Yeah. What would you think yeah. your desired takeout from your talks would have been? I think the, the main thing, and I, I think there were very many different takeouts, and again, it's the issue of, you know, how uncomfortable do you make people feel? Um, for me, what I would have liked is for people to then realize and think twice about how are we um, working on this on this negotiated settlement? Yeah. Again, it's not it's simply good enough to say people have access. You know, whether mm -hmm. it's things like BE and that sort of thing, you can't simply say, oh, people now have ownership. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does the company function? Um, you know, how does it treat you know the lowest employed uh, or the lowest um, paid worker and that sort of yeah. thing? Mm -hmm. How do we make sure that a marigana doesn't happen? All of these things are very much yeah. interconnected, and it's not just about the university space; it's about, about the entire way in which South Africa functions. That's Absolutely. And talking about the university space, Darius, I want to ask you, and let's take it back to Born Freeze, you know, what do you think um, would be the ideal life for, you know, a to be called free. like a born yeah. free, a true yeah. born free? I mean, we saw students and fees must fall and, you know, people can still say, but we're not born free. But black we're and white still... alike, actually. Yeah, actually, for everybody. For me, it's about embracing transformation mm -hmm. and really... For every individual to do what they can to move our country away from a Eurocentric dominated society to a new society, to an Afrocentric society where there is space for everybody. Yeah, but I want to ask about the elephant in the room, of course, white privilege that we've heard, and I want to, yeah. you know, throw it to you, Rams, quickly. How do we leverage it so that? You know, South Africa's equal. We all have equal opportunities. But especially a younger generation, because a younger generation white person isn't sitting there thinking, I'm privileged. And that, that doesn't, like... Doesn't and, it's, and it's also they don't think that You'd be very surprised, surprised It would be actually. sad that they don't think that way yeah. because they are privileged. Yeah. Uh, but how do we leverage it then, Rans? How do we... Where do we start, even? Well, mm. I think before we leverage, we should stop... You know, I think white people should stop this guilt consciousness okay. that they carry. Uh, you know, wanting to be made more comfortable about about things that are not comfortable. Mm. We should accept that things are not okay in this country. And I think elderly white people have a responsibility to tell their children the truth and say, you mm. as children can do dif things differently from how we did them. Anger is not going to help anybody anyway. But you know, Panash will tell us, if, if we don't get things right, what has been happening across the Limpopo is gonna look like a Sunday school uh, picnic one day. And I think we've got a, a great opportunity in this country 
to do amazing stuff. We, so we're a, we're an, an amazing nation. Yeah. But we, All right. We gotta we gotta yeah. work. All right. I mean, we can go on and on and on and on for the rest of. I mean, we need hours and hours for this topic. But our guests are still in the lot. But right now, let's move on over to Bonnie quickly. We'll be back. <laughs> meringues are one of the most diverse sweet treats from pavlova and extravagant meringue topped pies to plain and simple meringue kisses you really can do anything your heart desires with this cloud-like mixture in the spirit of the festive season we have food blogger nikki albertine here to make some super cute and simple snowy christmas tree meringue ice creams easy for the kids to make over this december holiday Lovely to have you in the loft. Thank you, Bonnie. Nice to be here. Oh, awesome. I'm so excited because I'm just seeing all this cuteness and this yeah, flowery sweetness going on. Like you said, they're really easy for kids to make. I mean, during yeah. the festive season, you kind of want to keep them busy. So it's a nice, innocent way to keep them busy. Yeah, yeah. awesome. OK. <laughs> So what's our first step? So firstly, we are going to make the meringue. Uh, we're going to whip up the eggs. I've added a little bit of cream of tartar in here just so that we don't um, over whip them. OK. Once they become nice and frothy, we're going to start adding the salati pasta. Salati pasta. You can't add it as slowly as possible. Okay. You just want to get your meringue mixture to a nice stiff peak. Yeah. Uh, you'll see just now what I mean. Okay. You're going to get it to a pipeable consistency. So it's kind of quite multi now and yellow. It'll go nice and white and, and shiny. Yeah. This type of, we have three types of meringues. Uh, this is a French meringue, which mm -hmm. um, is the least stable meringue because your egg doesn't get cooked in the process. Then okay. you have Italian meringue where you use the sugar syrup to make like a very stable, firm meringue. Uh -huh. And then you get a Swiss meringue, which is kind of a combination of the two. Okay. And what are we making here? We're making the French. The French yeah. version. Okay. So, you can't eat this with a spoon because it's raw. Because it's raw. Yeah. Yeah. They cook, but it's not ready. Yeah. That's and, and salati pasta snow is definitely our main ingredient, right? Yes, it's definitely. like our star yes. ingredient. Of course. Because it wouldn't work with any other type. Yes. Yeah. And pasta sugar, um, not granulated, because granulated you'll have, so it's too cold. Yeah. 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 And then icing sugar, you can use, but pasta is just the best. It's the best, yeah. It's looking gorgeous. See how shiny it is? Yeah. You kind of just want to get it to a point where, like, when you fill it with the mixture between your fingers, you can't really feel the sugar. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Should we move on to the next step before we run out of time? Okay. Sorry. Also, you have the luxury at home to just get it to a really, really smooth yeah. consistency. A palpable consistency. Yeah, so, okay. palpable. Yeah, this yeah. is still a little bit too runny. Palpable. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And obviously all the okay. details are on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Yeah, this is... We'll see how it goes. Should I help you push our pour it in yeah, for you? Yeah, please, that'll be fantastic. Okay. Thank you. There, there we, we go. go. Awesome. Thank you. Need to learn to ask for help. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's Thank a lifelong That's lesson. Perfect. Okay, there we go. Okay, awesome. awesome. Cool. Awesome. So basically, any shape you can this just before you get to this point, you can add your flavoring and coloring, whatever you like, vanilla, peppermint. Okay, so if you wanted a different color, yeah. you just add some coloring and flavoring and stuff. So you peppermint's a lovely idea. Peppermint with chocolate yeah. is really great. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what we have to do next is then stick our. Um, you're going to stick your ice cream sticks. stick in there. Okay. Right. This side up? Any okay. side up. You're going right. to stick it in and then... And then we oven. stick that in the oven? We stick it in the oven and then let the meringue dry out for about like, this. like an hour or so. It'll come Okay, out. cool. And then once it's out, what do we do next? Um, when it's out, then we're going to decorate. Mm -hmm. So the chocolate, we've got some melted chocolate here. And then we're just going to drizzle. You can really do kind of whatever you feel yeah, like Yeah, whatever doing. you feel yeah. like. Okay. Get as artistic whatever tickles as you like. fancy. Yeah. And then we've got some little sprinkles here. Okay, awesome. And that's what our final product should yeah. look like. Wonderful. And how long do they go in the oven for? Um, they take about an hour to dry out. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, the meringue just needs to be nice and crisp. Awesome. Once again, recipe is on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, for the full recipe and shopping list. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you today. Me. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Another delicious recipe brought to you by Salati Sugar. Always good, always sweet. Show them how much you love them with Bob Martin. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, live on SABC3. Now, if you're still shopping for Christmas presents, then listen up. With so many flavors on offer and so many great options to prepare, both hot and cold, it'll make the perfect gift this festive season for your loved ones or even yourself. Well, you're in luck because during this holiday season, you'll get 500 Rand off when you buy a machine in store. Also, head over to our Afternoon Express Facebook page for a massive competition. We know the struggle. It's hard to stomach coffee from a friend who just can't crack it. So tell us who and how bad their coffee is, and you could both win a Nescafe Dolce Gusto machine. You win, they win, friendship wins. Don't forget to um, hit us up hash using the hashtag life is too short for bad coffee. Okay, I'm gonna go impress my guests with my morale. Thank you Yay. very, very much, Bonnie. That looks absolutely incredible. Stunning. But our guests are here. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up the show quickly. So I'm going to give Panash one last question. Yeah. How do we create the safe spaces in order for us to have, you know, great conversation, move this country forward, move this continent forward? What do we do? Quickly, we only have 10 quickly. seconds. Uh, ask those who are the most marginalized. So if it's a trans woman, she needs to direct the space. If it's about women, women need to direct the space. You can't have men doing it on behalf of women. I agree. Yeah. So Amazing! <laughs> She's incredible. Right. You, you, you are, are incredible. Well, so Panache, thank you very, very much, Darius. What an honor, Mr. Ramsvoboda. You are on Metro FM this evening, correct? Yes, yes, what yes. What's yes. 7... 7.30 to 9 p.m. 7.30 on Metro FM. Make sure you join Ramsvoboda. Thank you very much to you for watching. And it's been absolutely incredible. Been we are insane. trending on Twitter, second in the country. But exactly. thank you very awesome. much for watching. Back again tomorrow, 4 p.m. right here on SABC3. We're going to tuck in, right? Tuck in, tuck in, tuck in, tuck in. I made Have you some Christmas Stream Thank yes. you very much for all Your of favorite. us here. Good evening, guys. <laughs> Happy eating. Happy eating. Yeah. Cheers. But the is. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express. In celebration of Reconciliation Day, we're joined by struggle icon and renowned pianist Abdullah Ibrahim, who shares his story and treats us to a very special live performance. Another feel good production. Hi YouTubers, thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day, Afternoon Express, enjoy.